All right, good afternoon to you all. Again, for those of you that don't know, I am Mr. Wells. And what we're going to do is I'm going to come around with a bucket, and when I just want you to close your eyes and pick a number. <laughs> Gotta be you the real one. Okay. All right, now that everyone has their number, let's think about for one second why are we here every day? In your own opinion, why are we here? Yes, ma'am. Why are you here? To inspire others. Okay. To help the children have a better future. Okay. To do my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Miss Pippen? Okay, Miss okay. Quinn? Emotionally balanced is what we found. Mm -hmm. Be honest, when I was just in the classroom, it was kind of like teach, be a relationship, teach, be a relationship. But I find myself now being the preacher, the daddy, mm -hmm. the uncle, sometimes the papa. Do whatever. And it's not just teaching. But for a moment, I want you all to take off the teacher's hat. Take off your teacher's hat. For just for 30 minutes, take it off. And you're going to become someone else, okay? All right. What number do you have, Ms. Lewis? 10. Number 10. All right. What's your number? Seven. How you doing, Ms. Morocco? Good morning. We have pizza if you would like some pizza. Number seven. I got my lunch, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Just pick a number. Okay. With number two. So I want you to turn into this person that's at the top of your, your paper. Change your mindset to think like that person. And let's see what we can do for the children, okay? All right. If you will, on the piece of paper that I gave you, go on and answer number one. Or if you don't want to write it, you can just think of what you want to say. I just gave you the paper just in case. Look at number one on your paper. Mm -hmm. And let's just jot down whatever you want to say or think about. About 15, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Had to be a paragraph. Also, why you work on that? Change your name. Change my name. Whatever you want your but name. I'm still this person. You're still that person, but change your name. <laughs> so who are you? Thank you. Missionary can be Cinderella. Right. <laughs> <laughs> changing our identity for about 30 minutes and see what we can do to help with the culture here in Kona. Ms. Queen, you ready? Sure. What's your name? Who are you? My name is Renee. Okay. Okay, hey Renee. <laughs> <laughs> No, ma'am. Just number two. Okay, right. All right. Miss Santangelo, what you got? Uh, minister. Okay. Whoa. All right. Come on, preach. <laughs> what you got? What's your name? What you got for number one? Uh, 
Reverend Claire. All right, come on, Reverend. Yeah. Blood of Reverend Baptist Church. All right, Miss Lewis, what you got? I'm Nurse Veronique. Okay. <laughs> Veronique. Veronique. <laughs> What's your segment number one? For now, do I read my question? If you want to. Yes, okay, my question for number one says, after having 15 surgeries, three dead, dead I'm a nurse, three dead and a flat tire today, how do you feel when you receive a call that your scholar was just in a fight this week? What you say? I put, I'm frustrated, I'm exhausted, I'm in disbelief, or really, what else could go south today? Missionary? I don't have much to say, but uh, I'm a mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. My name is Rina. Okay. You ain't changed your name. <laughs> That's your name. <laughs> <laughs> Rina. I don't want to change my name. <laughs> okay, Miss Rina. What you got? I have bossy. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Miss Rina. sometime in education mm -hmm. we want we come together and say we want things to be better mm -hmm. but do we really change mm -hmm. we come up with these wonderful ideas of what we can do and how we can save the children and how we can do all of this but at the end of the day what kind of effort are we putting forward to make this happen okay. what you got um uh, miss Pippen? i work hard all day at the local school and at 3 30 every day the kids come from the local schools uh local schools come here to go to school the day what do you think Okay. Uh, I said teach the children first because teachers be there all day long and good to be helping hand and not make the person's job hard and it should be. So. Mr. Rank, what you got? I am Zia, McDonald's cashier. Okay. But the question is, what is the hardest challenge of your day? As a cashier, the hardest challenge is dealing with the cash. It's in the mind it's in my mind all day to keep up with the balance. So that at the end of the day, I'm not committing any mistake, counting, and all that stuff. So that's the hardest challenge I think. Okay. Good, good. Well, again, I thank you all for being here. The reason why I chose to do it that way is because a lot of times when we go in meetings, it's like just a boring meeting that we're in. We don't know why we're here. But I wanted us to change our mindset and see how do other people think? What are other people dealing with? Just think about it. Lil Ray Ray may be bad in your class every day, but Ms. Lewis is a nurse. And I'm calling Ms. Lewis after you had all this that happened today. It's no excuse. But sometimes we got to learn to be compassionate. Mm -hmm. Say, what can I do? Because sometimes the, the, the only structure the kids get is what they get from us. Yeah. Just being honest. Yeah. If Miss Santangelo is not on about the old man problem, teaching from bail to bail, when they get home, they just do whatever I want to do. I go back to smoking, go back to doing whatever I, I mm -hmm. choose to do. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, you can go ahead. So we're looking at transcending. Go to the next one. The agenda, the purpose. Why are we here today? What's the primary purpose? Why are we here? For who? Children. children. That's the purpose why we're here every day. Our journey in charge. Why are we imagine schools? Let's start drinking together. Now what? So what? You go to the next one. Some of our objectives. Get insight, feedback, and generate ideas together to inform our school model. When you think of a school, a model school, what comes to mind? Just anybody. What comes to mind when you think of the school? Organization. Organization. Anything else? You gotta have um, different ideas for a strong foundation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything? Positive environment. Positive environment. That goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we always beating them up, what do they have for to look for? What, what do they have to look forward to? Mm -hmm. Think about a model school. Is school the way it was when you were in school? Mm -hmm. There's no way like it. Okay. Can you compare and contrast? Yes. Just anything. Um, the curriculum is different. The curriculum is different? Mm -hmm. What about cell phones? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Not at all. They had it. They did. It was scripted. As soon as that cell phone was taken, it was no problem. It was no problem. The parents were sick. Mr. Santana was an idiot. We have none. Exactly. But the point is, it was different. It was strict. 
straight all the way, all the way around the board. If I saw what you got to, yeah. you know what I mean, it was no question. It was no doubt. If I saw the print, it was no doubt. And so that makes it so different. It makes perfect sense. Second time, second time, Karen got something to get the third time. You get to MVP. Right. So you want, if you want to put it in the show, and that was in the handbook. And now it's like. Can you charge my phone? <laughs> you can charge my phone. You can just charge it for me. Uh -huh. It's different. It's different. Yeah, that's right. MacBooks, like I mean Chromebooks. We have textbooks, computer labs, only textbooks. And at Summit, when I taught at Summit, they don't even have textbooks at all. They have an iPad, and everything they need is on that iPad. So what happens when the internet is down? Edu education has completely changed. So now we're looking at how can we come together and have a model school. What do we want Macomb High to look like? We gotta be a coalition of community, community members. That's why I changed who you are for a few minutes. Because we need to see from a different perspective. What can I do? Do I continue to do what I've been doing? Or is there something that I can do better? Because I understand as a, as a teacher, at this point of the year, we just want me to come on and just be done. But we have a whole nother nine weeks. What can we do to ensure success? All right, develop clarity of our design journey. Yeah. Okay. Everybody say safe space. Safe, safe space. space. All right, when you think about safe space, we have to look at clarity on our design journey. Being honest, it's clear that some people are not here for educating the children. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's not the objective. Get a check. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what is your purpose for being here? I see this as ministry. This is a way to really witness to someone and not just about you know about God. It's just mm -hmm. having a relationship with the kids. It's like, no, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. True story, I had a student during COVID. He would not go to other teachers' classes. But if they allowed him to sit in here with his Chromebook, he would sit in here and do his work. Mm -hmm. And the one day I was not here was the day, you know, he hadn't been here since then. I just say that. Yep. Uh, he was there. That one day. Normally when he got in trouble, he ran to Mr. Wales. Mr. Wales gonna make it right. But the one day I was not here, when I got back, I haven't seen him since. How do we have to continue to inspire them? Because if you be honest about it, somebody inspired you one day. I'm just being honest. My, my principal at Hammond Westside was the best principal and the best I've ever seen. And she's the reason why I want to be a principal today. The way she ran that school and carried that school. Westside had really gone down. And then it made a turn. Okay. Next slide. I always pop. Community connection, we're not going to do that far. Keep going. All right. A thing that we need to realize is it's okay to disagree. Mm -hmm. It is. It's completely all right to disagree. Miss Santangelo is older than us. Miss Santangelo has been in education longer than us. Some things they may have done back then, we may not be able to do today. Or some things they did back then, we need to bring those things back. And then we'll see a difference. But until we come together and see what the problem is, not fighting each other, mm -hmm. but saying, what is the problem? Locate the cancer and get rid of it. Yeah. Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Mm -hmm. And if we don't struggle together, how are we gonna make it? Mm -hmm. In your marriage, okay. everything hadn't always been great. Mm -hmm. Even if y'all didn't throw pots and pans, <laughs> you had a problem, a disagreement, mm -hmm. every now and then that you have to work through those disagreements. And it's the same way here. We can't be biased. We have to be open-minded mm -hmm. to something new. Are you willing to try something different? I know as a, as a teacher, every year I'm looking to do something different. Mm -hmm. Because what you did last year for one group, it may not work. Correct. Because I, last year I kind of had like the high flyers. Well, what I assigned them, I can't assign the group that I have now. Because they, they catch me trying to do the other stuff. If I did the same thing with them. So we have to be open-minded and willing to change. All right, let's look at question number two on your paper. And I'll give you about 30 seconds to go on and do number two. Oh, oh okay. All right, nurse. Oh, I'm nurse Barry. Go ahead. Go ahead, nurse. <laughs> My second question says, as a nurse, you have... Seeing how gun violence has affected our community, what would be your recommendation as a local nurse to help bring trust back to our community? 
How can we get rid of gun violence? Mm -hmm. And how can we restore trust? Because that's a problem that we have now. Trust. Yes, ma'am. Well, for me, trust goes beyond the gun violence. It's just trusting in general. Because if you trust in general, it won't lead to the gun violence. So I put, um, until we make it personal, when we interact with one another and not just make it lip service, we're never going to trust. And we got to learn to be who we are, no matter what the venue or the circumstances is. Okay. So what I mean is like, when I see Santangelo, um, I don't know her, but when I get to know her, I need to make it personal. I don't need to just say, I just work with her, but I work with her, but what else? And when you do that, you won't be so quick to pull a gun. You won't be so quick to curse out or mistreat. So until you make it personal, it's not going to ever change. That's good. That's good. Ms. Santangelo, what you got? How do you feel about education as a minister? Uh, of course, education is very important. But as a minister, I think, of course, you want everyone to learn to love God first, love themselves, and love others. You know, they need to learn how to be respectful of everyone's differences and not be quick to become angry if someone disagrees with them. You know, just learn to be accepting of others' opinions and try, you know, to grow and be close to people and not to see everyone as just, just someone there. You know? I agree. I chose the minister as one of the people because sometimes I've seen sometimes people that in the church, they're so spiritual that they don't see how <laughs> other things are important, if that makes sense. Correct. And I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm just saying. It's I, just, think, I just think of people. In you're so <laughs> spiritual-minded you know, that you're no right earthly right. good. Yeah, and right. that's scripture. Yeah. But I use that because and the statement was made, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. A statement was made that I've heard that the reason why we have the problems that we have today is because we took pride out of the school. My opinion on that is pride needs to be in your house first. Amen. I agree that if we want to do it here, we need it. We do need it here. But if little Ray Ray, if mama not praying with little Ray Ray at home, don't expect the school to come here. And I think that's sometimes what people expect from us. Miracle. Yes. If, well, go to school, your teacher going to show you. But are you at home doing homework? Are you at home practicing with your child? Okay. Right. Come on, a uh, boss lady, uh, overprotective parent. <laughs> what, what can we do as a school system to better meet the needs of your scholars? Who can we do? We got to have the community and agree on the, to have an agreement on the, you know, whatever the, the plan you have, everybody should agree on it and should implement and it should be consistent, like, you know, we got to keep going with that. And let that environment for students or the scholars should, should be a friendly environment so that, you know, a scholar is sitting in your classroom and being afraid to ask. Of course, I will be having the other stuff, but uh, regarding the subject matter, the scholars should have that mindset, you know, even the thing that the problem is wrong, that they are ready to give the wrong answer, you know, without any fear. And try to have that learning environment, you know, you know I don't know how to put it in that, that works. I got you, I understand. And that yeah. takes us to the term, coalition, a broad and a diverse stakeholder supporting the journey. It's not just one group of people as educators. Yeah. While studying for the SLLA, I found out that a lot of times they had parents, and y'all teach math, parents were choosing which textbook. You don't know anything about a classroom, mm -hmm. but parents were a part of the process, and that goes along with coalition. Having a diverse group of stakeholders, not just one group, a group of educators. You need a variety. You need the, the, uh, the nurse. You need the minister. You need the overprotective parent. You need all these things. What you got, Ms. Ms. Uh, Pittman? Um, Number two. Well, I need to read the question, but it's still probably more than you. Okay. Um, the question is comparing contracts by schools to when you are a student to today's students. Um, I started out with that um, students were more obedient and followed rules with no problem. They were respectful to authority figures. Um, students were willing to learn and be successful. Is um, It was, wasn't important to them because they knew their parents wanted to accept less 
not say it's difficult, more difficult because it teaches their parents to back up. And, that, and that's something that we need today, parental involvement. Mm -hmm. Just this morning, one of my students, when I gave him his phone back, he said, Mr. Rose, I want to show you something. He brought his phone over. He showed me where there was a student that goes to South Pike, where one of the teachers has been messaging his phone. He said, I don't have a job. So the teacher's actually trying, but the parent gave him the wrong number. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to, to get more parental involvement? What do y'all think? What can we do? That's kind of hard because when you think about it from a parent standpoint, I want to be a parent because you're going to get my number, I want my child. <laughs> but you have some parents that really be like, they're not my problem in school. You really have that. So it's like, how do you change the mindset of a grown individual? You know, they say you can't teach all dogs in school, you can't teach them. But, but then there's an issue when it comes to disciplining your child, then we have to be in So what if something, well, for me, they have it, but what if that child died in school? How are we going to do that just because of money? But then you're going to say school fault that you didn't contact people. We did. We contacted what we had. But it shouldn't take a situation for like that to occur for those type of things to change. Yes, yes. I was going to say on her piggyback on what she said. Mm -hmm. With the parents, um, we don't have that one-on-one, -on -one, but parents are in the workforce. They're nurses and they're in the community in a different aspect until we make it personal. Mm -hmm. Like, when we go to work, like before I started here, I was in school and working at Lowe's. If I was at Lowe's and I didn't make it personal, therefore the people around me is not personal, they're not gonna be concerned about the TV. But when, when we take everything, wherever we are, and make it personal, it's contagious. So if you work at Lowe's and you make it, whatever it is personal, it's gonna be contagious, so it's gonna bleed into the house and bleed into our school. Because like she said, we don't have access to Lowe's, Sanderson Farm, right. the hospital. Right. We don't have that, but when everybody make it personal, it's gonna bleed into every, and the village will raise the kids. Right. But but until we get that mindset, because when I worked at Lowe's, people just come to work just to get a check and they're not paying attention to the customers. They're not paying attention to their coworker. If I work with you, I know when you sick, mm -hmm. I know when you sad, yeah. I know when something bothering you, I know all of that, and I'm going to be like, hey, Santana, how's it going? You know I'm going to pick with you, you know I'm going to come and mess with you, I'm going to hug you or something, but I do that everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. So I make every relationship personal, but until everybody takes, we're, the village ain't going to work. We're going to have broke chain links, and we're going to have what we have here at McComb. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. A house that divided against itself. It's going to fall. It's going to fall. It is. What you got, Mr. Ryan? <laughs> Oh, my question was, as a parent, your scholar is always in trouble. How do you manage to provide for your family while dealing with five teenagers who are constantly in trouble? That's already a mystery. Right. So first of all, like they are talking about the trouble, so locate the reason of the trouble. That's what I'll try to do. Is it the school? Is it something with me? Is it something with the siblings? That's what I'm going to figure out. It's not easy to make them get rid of that trouble, but try and try till you succeed. The word, and now they were also asking, how do you manage to provide for your family? If the word parent itself added responsibility to manage, that is managing everything, the hours, the interaction with the kids, understanding, interaction with the school, teacher, that's what I think should be managed. I, I agree. When looking at children that, that we see every day, some of them, they just need a, somebody just to talk to. Mm -hmm. And our slides are talking about mm -hmm. trust. They just need somebody they can trust. Mm -hmm. Somebody that'll listen to what's going on. Not anybody that's going to baby them or just give them what they want. Some of them just want somebody to just listen to me. Mm -hmm. There's a student, when she gets to school, she comes up, walk up to me, wants to know if her clothes are acceptable for today. Mm -hmm. Because mom or daddy's not at home mm -hmm. to tell me in the morning, mm -hmm. no, you can't wear that. No, don't put that on. Mm -hmm. So she comes up and she got, has like her hands up wanting to know, is she good? am I good? Mm -hmm. What can I do? All right, Miss Queen, what you got? So mine says, how do you feel about education as a local business owner? How does the local <coughs> school system affect your business for the future? Hmm. So, as a local business owner, education is important. I have students as employers, and I ensure that they are relieved for their duties at, at least and for an hour with a tutor to complete homework, which I wish a lot of businesses did, but I understand it's a money problem. Um, that gives them plenty of time to, okay, yeah, you're working for me, but during your break time, this is what you're doing to ensure that you're still getting your education in. So as far as the school affects you, the school is building my future, possibly 
business partners or my future vendors that I may have to deal with. So the school is in place to educate them, not just in math, but you got to think about English. I don't want nobody to go business partner and can't spell business, but we got a problem. I, you know, if you come meet with me and you telling me, yeah, I got hopes for you to drink and stuff like that, I'm sorry, I don't mean no harm. You know, not talking about accent, but as your presentation means a lot. So teaching kids in school, oral, oral speaking, like communication, things like that, that is important because their first presentation makes a big difference. So as a business, I'm looking at the schools to kind of do their part. And I know it doesn't start just at school, it starts at home. It has to linger, it's, it's one big rotation. When those children are born, they start at home. Before they get to school and when they get age appropriate, then you go to school. Then it's like a rotation, then you in the community. So it's like, if I'm not starting at home with you, and the school, you know, they gotta do their part, but then still, it's not connected at home. When you get to my business, we may not be able to work. So it's like, it's a rotation, but in that rotation, though, them arrows got splits. It's not just that one arrow that we're used to, it's splits. One go left, one go right. Good, good, good. Can you go to the next slide for me? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to give you a sticky note if you have a comment or a question that you would like to add up. But before we go to that part, just jot down what would you do differently. So after today, what could you do differently? For one second, put your educator hat back on. What would you do differently? What's something you could work on? that you would just do. Even if it's just, I'm going to take two minutes every morning and just pray for my scholars a little bit longer because they need a little more prayer. <laughs> <laughs> two more minutes. <laughs> Miss Queen, can you hit the next one? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that, this leads into our next slide. The future comes from where we are now. What could we change now to ensure that we're successful as well as our scholars? Remember, the, the main reason why we're here is for the children. What you say, Ms. Lewis? All right, then I'm a teacher. Back with my teacher. I'm All right. very neat in there. <laughs> Being that this is my second year teaching, so I'm pretty new, I feel I can be more creative to reach students where they are versus what I'm used to, what I'm familiar with. Because I talk to my daughter, the one that's still here, and I tell her, I don't mean to intimidate her or my other kids or people that I'm around, but she tells me that I do. And I told her, tell me why. She said, because you expect great things out of everybody that you're around. And I said, I don't tell them that. I don't say, Mr. Wells, I expect you to be 100%. <laughs> so she told me, she said, no, Mom, you don't say it. She said, but what comes out your mouth exemplifies that. So I'm working on trying to meet people where they are. Because when I meet people, I just see good. And I'm like, you can reach the mountain. But everybody can't handle it. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn it. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm trying yeah, to just do it. Miss Santangelo? Well, I feel like I'm always preaching to the kids, <laughs> trying to inspire them to want to learn. Because they have to want it. But they don't, a lot of them don't truly want it. So I'm, uh, I think I need to try to come up with a, a, a plan, like more specific and exact things to do to try to inspire <laughs> them to learn. To want yes, to, to succeed yes, and learn because most of them, their favorite subject is not math. You know, um, and some of them just want to just put anything and turn it in and don't care that it's not right. Yeah. So, you know, trying to reach those students better. Yes, Miss Intent, uh, Miss uh, Tadam? I think I. <laughs> like to contact more parents, of course, doing the open houses. I met few parents uh, and uh, 
it's like communication. They know me and I know them, like, you know, I want to chat about that. But I want to have more parents to be, like, you know, know me, my students, my class, and you know, that kind of communication with them. So that, you know, if we have, they help, the parents help, and we have their support, things may be a little bit better, but it, you know, we have to go a long way. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Ms. Um, I say, um, that I think I need to make myself more available for my students, um, because everyone, I know y'all see my parents on my school, <laughs> students lately, like, it's like they're ready to talk to me about some stuff I can't because anybody else is around, I think I should just make a certain time for each student to come, they feel like they got something to come talk to me about, because they couldn't be all the time on the topic, I feel like it's not the right time, right place. So yeah, because they got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yes, ma'am. They got a lot of stuff going on. They, they seem to be comfortable to come tell me, so I mean, I mean myself not ready. And that's something that we should just work on. Trust, building trust. My mother-in-law, she's deceased now, but her favorite teacher was one of my cousins, which is Ms. Rowana Allen from Mid County. When back then, it wasn't like it is today where students could actually contact the teacher. And so my mother-in-law ran up her sister's uh, phone bill because all night she wanted to be on the phone with the teacher. They had a relationship. There was nothing going on. It was just, she was a young teacher. They had a relationship. She looked up to her as a big sister. She knew she could relate to her. And they had that involvement. We don't have that now. So we have to find ways so that we can listen to what they have to say because you'll be surprised what you hear from. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Narayan? So try to be interactive with students. That's, that I agree, like everyone believe in that. But what happens sometimes is students are not responding the way we want and we quit. So here we need to stop. No matter they are not responding the way you want today, but things are not same on the first <coughs> day, tenth day of the month. So sometimes first day feels like fruitless, but last day feels like more fruitful than expected. I think it's complex health. And that's piggyback basically off of this piggyback Because I have found that I am one of those as well, that they're very comfortable to society, but to others, it's not looked upon as a good thing. If you kind of get where I'm going with it, it's like, it's not that I'm really just giving it no leeway because my sister will tell you, Miss Queen whoops me. They will tell you that. <laughs> they will sit there and tell you, Miss Queen whoops me. And we're out of turn your legs because I'm going to church, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they just, they feel comfortable to come to me about certain things. And I talk to them, and I do, I try to keep them on the right path. And I tell them, I said, from the first standpoint, Miss Queen ain't always been a good person. I have changed, and I thank the Lord that I have changed, because I was one of those children. It wasn't that I was defined or anything in that nature. It was just that I had a teacher like Miss Olu. They expected so much out of me. Well, I didn't want to give 100%. I only wanted to be a 75. I didn't want to seem like the smart, you know, the smart thing. I'm going to do my work. Don't get me wrong. And I had those that pushed me. Great. But then I had those due to my family's past or they were just bad. They was fighters, I'm sorry. It was like, if you heard the name Simmons, oh, this one you gotta watch. This one is that, this one is that. Yeah, my mama wasn't bad. <laughs> but, I mean, that's how they looked at me because everybody in the community went to that went to South Park. So when they saw me, they just knew, oh, she's a fighter. Well, they wasn't telling no stories. Don't get me wrong, it was in us, but it wasn't that we just came to cause trouble. So you have this half that looks at you as to be a defiant individual, then you have this half that looks at you, oh no, this is her. How do you meet in the middle as a student when your teachers treat you differently from each direction? And I see that here. You have some, oh, their, their family has a history here, so some people look at them as troublemakers. But then you have those that feel like me, I don't be here three years, and I see them, I, I don't have that student that you were telling me about. So that child tries to meet in the middle, I go to your class, and this teacher that thinks that they're defiant, you know, it's kind of like pounding them, pounding them, pounding them. But then you get to my class and you cheat. You do your work, I have no problem with you. You come vent to me as you need to, I get a different child. So as teachers, overall, we have to keep that open mind. Not basically just look at them on the past, but look at what their future could be if we treat them this way. That's right. Now, I'm not saying, you know, be lenient with them. Like I tell you, I want my kids. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying, though. But that's where they at. And I can relate to that because I was that child. And to piggyback on what you said, even in your classroom, you can kind of talk to somebody else 
and see what they've done with that child. Mm -hmm. Because that was one that was giving Miss Bernie the blues. Mm -hmm. like every day, she was just driving her crazy. And this is what I told her. I said, give him something to do. I told him. I said, give him something to do. Let him be the one to sit at your desk and go to the next slide. You, as a history teacher, you always go to the next slide. Let him do that. Let him have input. And it changed the whole environment mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. It helps for us to work. Work together. Yeah. Work together. Building co coalition. The reason why we're here today is pretty much to look at, let's consider how others feel. People don't always understand what we do every day. Mm -hmm. But at least for a few minutes, you got to see, okay, they got all of this going on. Mm -hmm. I'm a different person. Let's look at it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. What can I do differently? Even if what you wrote on your paper is not what you really want to do differently. Maybe you say, well, I don't want to say what I'm going to do. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. What can I do differently? Or what can I do better? And in my conclusion, something that my bishop always says, he says, stay focused, drive, and go forward. Thank y'all, Matthew Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs>